Cleaning Nation. Welcome back to the conclusion of special guest expert Shamim Rajani from Gentech Solutions. Before we dive in, if you want to take your business to the next level and hang out with Mike, myself, and a few of your fellow owners up close and personal, go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash live and get the details on our upcoming live event where we are going to implement the entire clean profit method together. Without further ado, let's get right back into it. All right. So thank you for sharing that. Let's turn the page and talk about how uh, you've helped me and how you can help cleaning nations. So again, the big thing for me was uh, we had a big website redesign and I found that there's kind of two categories of folks and neither were working for me. The first was the guy or gal that didn't really know what they were doing. Uh, maybe they didn't have a lot of clients. You called them, they pick up the phone right away because they got nothing else to do. Um, and they're kind of figuring out as they go. And they might be cheap. You might be able to get a website for a thousand bucks or 800 bucks or something like that. But frankly, they don't know what they're doing. I would ask them questions that they should have been asking me. And they didn't, not only did they not know the, an- the answer, they didn't even know why I was asking the question. Just, just the wrong guy or gal. And um, that's fine. I'm not saying that there's no place for those people. Maybe Shamim was that for the first six months of her her career, right? But that wasn't working for me. I I, I could not recommend to you guys, hey, go to this guy or this gal that's just kind of figuring out. The second end was probably where uh, Shamim's American counterpart, where they had the staff, they, they knew what the heck they were doing, not only were they answering all of my questions, they had questions I hadn't even thought about that that needed to be asked that I didn't even know what I didn't know. And for you know eight grand, I could get a really nice website, but I didn't. I so it's like, well, I don't. I'm willing to spend more than seven hundred bucks or whatever the the cheapy one that doesn't know what they're doing. But I'm not really willing to spend eight thousand bucks on a ten page website or something like that. So. I was stuck, right? I didn't want junk and I didn't want to, and I even have the money. I'm just cheap. I don't want to blow it on that. And a lot of you guys are in the same spot. Either you don't have the money, so it's not even an option or you have the money, but you you don't want to waste it. Um, So I'd used folks overseas before and the frustration was a communication. Um, Shamim's got an accent, but I can understand what the heck she's talking about all the time. I never had a, huh, what or whatever. And I'll I'll tell you on the, again, you guys can go to growmycleaningcompany.com and see her work. And there was, three or four instances over the, I don't know how many hundreds of pages we have on there where I'm like, no, the, the way that you said it wasn't exactly, it wasn't like a gramma- grammatical error. It was just like, yeah, we wouldn't speak that way. So there's probably four instances where I had to tell her team. And again, Shamim, she got me all hooked up. I don't know how I connected with her. I think I was referred to her, but then it was all her team. And I love it. Like her team was great. You know, a lot of times you get nervous. Oh, I want to talk to the owner. Her team was competent. Didn't, didn't need to talk to Shamim. And she'd kind of check in now and again. But the guy uh, she set me up with, Hasnain, was great. Like he, we, we just worked together and it was fine. So, um, and that's not typical. I just, I'm trying to tell you the, the pitfalls I've run into. So uh, whether you Shamim or not, you don't run into these things. So a lot of times if you go overseas, you really got to watch the grammar and the, the syntax and the, you know how it is when we get these spammy, not that this is coming from Pakistan, but we get these spammy emails trying to shake you down for money or just some weird thing. But, and they don't speak ex- or even now voicemails, you know, you get these voicemails that are computer generated, but they don't, it's clear they don't speak English, right? Which is fine. But yeah, anyway, all that to say, I didn't have to deal with that. That's the first thing. The second thing is, I don't know why, and no disrespect to for Pakistan, India, um, there's one or two other countries that are just, it's a bear. They don't, they don't tell the truth. They go, yeah, 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 we'll get it, we'll get it, we'll get it. But it, it doesn't get done. You're constantly like pushing against water with a bunch of, yes, we'll do it, but it never gets done. Um, and I found Shamim, that was not the case. She always did what she said she was going to do, and if she didn't, she'd she you know, what she just handled like, you know, I don't want to say like an American company, but from my experience, like an American company, like I think I'm sure she made a mistake or two in, in the middle, but we, we got it sorted out. It wasn't this just flat out lying and going, but you said it'd be done now. It's not done. What are we doing? Like there was just none of that. So, and then the third thing, which I usually don't like, and it's still an issue with uh, Shamim's company, but there's kind of pros and cons was the time difference, right? Like right now it's 7.30 in the morning for me. I think it's 7.30 at night for her. She's kind enough to, uh, you know, <laughs> poor lady wants to go home and be with her family. I'm yakking about cleaning companies. Um, but so the, the bad news is it's it's difficult. If you want to talk to her face-to-face like this, you have to make some planning. The good news is she slept while I worked and vice versa. So um, she would put up, or not her, but her people would put up notes on the, the, the software we use to communicate. Um, I would respond to them, go to bed. I'd wake up. Lots of work would be done. They'd have questions for me. Uh, they'd go to bed. I'd respond to that, so on and so forth. So for me, that was my experience um, with Shamim, which I'd not been able to find elsewhere. And it's really important for you. And she was able to ask me, like, this, this is embarrassing, stupid stuff. We had our logo. And uh, she's, I just needed the website redone. She's like, do you want, do you want us to redo the logo? I said, well, not really. It's, it's fine. And she said, well, I, I think may- nicely, right? She said, I think maybe you could redo it. I forget how she said it, but she asked two or three times. And she even said, 
Like, let me just do a couple mock-ups or however she did it. She made it very easy for me to do the logo. And then by golly, she did the logo and it was better. And I was a little angry, but now I like it. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I don't mind. <laughs> so first I was offended and then I'm like, well, I guess it is better and I need better. So, uh, and we ended up paying her to do the logo cause she just did great work. So long story short, um, talk to us about how many, what is, so that's, that's my perspective. And Oh, just so you guys know, I, I was going to kind of keep this a secret, but I'll let the cat out of the bag. We are actually coming. This is the first time I'm introducing it anywhere ever, at all. Uh, we're coming up with a bidding software uh, and a tracking software that I'm constantly telling people what to do and they don't know where to go and blah, blah, blah. So, and I'm having Shamim do that. So we'll, maybe we'll have her back when that comes out. But when that comes out, she's doing that. And that's a much bigger, more complex project than the first one. And honestly, I had the first one ready to go earlier, but I'm like, she's from Pakistan. I've been through this. It's going to be a pain in the neck. They're not going to be able to do it. It's going to be too confusing. The late, I just had all these fears and bad experiences. She crushed it on the website. Almost immediately, I said, okay, what would look like to get the, uh, the, the, this other bidding software done and they're work, working on it currently. So that's my perspective as an American business owner trying to go overseas for a solution. Tell me what it's like on your side in terms of working with American people, the people that fail, like, Hey, the people, the customers that act like this or do this have a bad experience. And then the customers that have a good experience, here's what they act like. So we can kind of know from your perspective, how to get the best, you know, best service from, from you or a company like you. Right. Thank you so much. I am uh, so I'm sort of like shaken and I'm happy and I'm uh, taking notes <laughs> what I can do better. Uh, so um, ever since um, we started off, um, I, I've not worked with a lot of local companies. Uh, I mostly work with American clients uh, and I've also worked with a lot of uh, UK based clients and some in Australia and Canada, but mostly American clients because my company is also registered in the state of Minnesota. Uh, genetic solutions is registered in the state of Minnesota, and because I have family there, so you know it's 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 easier for me uh, to work uh, with American. I've also tried working with Middle Eastern clients. Uh, no offense, uh, it's very difficult to work with Middle Eastern. I've I've grown up in Middle East myself, actually in Bahrain, but uh, it's it's very difficult to work with uh, uh, the Arabs. Sorry. So <laughs> I, I tried I tried to register a company in Dubai. Uh, you know, for five years, try to get some work out of them. But you know, um, there, the fact that me being a woman was a huge thing. So you know, it was very difficult to break through that glass ceiling. I tried for a few years, it didn't work out, I just let it go because um, I feel much more comfortable working with my American clients than I feel working with uh, Arabs or with Pakistanis as well. Even in the Pakistan corporate sector, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's really difficult. When you're a woman, they try. They, they think you're stupid, and uh, uh, you know. And and and, and, and but, but I mean, I, I look at them and I, I say, doesn't he know where I'm coming from? I'm coming from like 20 years of IT experience, and he, he thinks I'm stupid. Uh, well, the, the dumb lady that built a 50 50 person empire by herself in, in a decade. Absolutely. Like, come on. Absolutely. You know what I like about American people, and I keep quoting it all the time wherever I go. Uh, is uh, that um, most American people are very honest and they're very upfront. So if they don't like something, they don't like something. They'll tell you there and then, I don't like this, you know. And I like that because that keeps things very upfront and very clear. So I, so the expect it, it, it sets the expectations right. So uh, so I've, I've uh, and I have these values of honesty and integrity. I think um, I can see them behind you. There's an orange sign that says gritty. Yeah. I'm assuming that starts with. Integ. <laughs> there we go. See? Sincerity. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so this is something that I've instilled into the team as well. So, if you don't know something, if you can't do something, just say it. You don't have to. You know, if, if I'm not able to do a project, I'll tell you. I'm not able to do this. Let me go and find out, and then I'll come back to you. But I won't say, oh no, no, I'll take this. I'll take this. We'll do this. We'll do this. That's not something that we'll do. A lot of people do that, uh, uh, but. Uh, we're not the kind of people that do that. That's one thing. So hold on. Let me just say, it's funny. One of the big things I mentioned to you all, and it's funny, it just worked right in re reverse. I said, I've worked with folks overseas and exactly what you said. They don't say what they mean. They don't, they always want to please you. So they'll say, yes, 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 yes. But then they drive you nuts because nothing ever gets done. And Absolutely. it drives me nuts. And I think that's a, I've not been a non-American. I've only been American. I think that's an American trait, but it works in reverse. Shamim's going, it drives me nuts. 
on the other yeah. side. So it's almost like be the be the buyer that you want your seller to be. So we connect because if I'm full of crap and I tell her this and I do that, she doesn't want to work with me and she's not able to serve me. So I've got to be this honest guy. She picks up on that and goes, I like this guy. He says what he means. He tells me the truth. If he says we're going to do this, we do it. And that's yeah. and then I get the same thing from her. So I think it's really a matter of don't expect honesty and integrity if you're not going to live with honesty and integrity. And you've attracted me because that's who you are. And that stands, from my experience, that stands way out in the Middle East. Go ahead. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, when I did my um, uh, my course for Scrum Master, I don't know if you know about Scrum. Scrum is a, is, is, is a, is a way of, uh, you know, building things. It's, it's agile, the technology. So you start building things and then, uh, you know, uh, so if, if, so websites are very small stuff, but we're for doing bigger applications. You know, when, uh, when Neelam tells you we have a sprint review meeting, mm -hmm. That's that's part of Scrum, and then I'm I'm part of that. I wasn't there in the first meeting, and then I came in the second meeting where you called me. So I'm usually in every sprint review meeting, and I'm the Scrum master. So the Scrum master is somebody who will uh, sit as somebody in in between the the product owner, which is you, and the development team, and make sure that everything gets done right. So I will stand in your shoes, and I will tell the team, no, this is not right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want this for me. That's funny. So, you know, they, don't, they don't like me. They don't like me. <laughs> that is so funny. We, yeah, neither me... does the customer. Neither does the product owner. Because if the product owner comes back and says, you know, I also wanted this. I also, I would say, no, no, this wasn't in the scope. If you want this, this is the change request. It, so I, I'm the one who's, who's going to be deciding this was the scope. This is what the product owner wants. It has to be there. If you've done it, fine. If I don't like the way it's done, redo it because it should be the way I like the way because I know the product, the, the customer might not know it can be done in a better way, but I do because it, I belong to the same gang. It's so funny because you were doing that, but I didn't know. Now you've explained what, what, what you were really doing. And as, as she's explaining, I'm like, oh yeah, so let me just let you guys know what that looks like. Again, this bidding software that we're doing is a little more complex and a lot more complex, frankly, than a regular website. Um, re redesign. And again, when I say they ask the questions or set up the things that I didn't even know to ask, this is a perfect example. When I said yes, I didn't know, well, when should we pay and how should we check up? So she sent me this whole thing, like 15% to start and 20, you know, like three or four or five payments at various uh, keystones, which is good, right? If she said, give me half or all of it up front, I would have been very uncomfortable. If I told her, you have to do the whole thing and do all this work before I pay you, that's not really fair to her. So without me as a customer having to figure that out, she gave me a very, what I thought was fair payment schedule. Of, okay, this kind of keeps where you don't have my money and I don't have any work and you don't have, you don't have all this in money invested and you don't have any money. You know, it was, it was a very fair thing. So I wouldn't have even thought of that. She brought that up. The meeting schedule, the flow was, I think it's a three month project. Every two weeks, we've got a, a schedule. I think it's at 7 a.m. my time and 7 p.m. their time or vice versa. But it's, you know, we both made a little concession. So neither of us are up at two in the morning. Um, and it's, she's exactly right. We had the development team. It really did feel like, and I was, it was odd. And I didn't recognize why it was odd until she even explained it. It was because usually it's, I think there was just me on my side and two or three of you know, her folks on their side. And, it, you know, it can feel a little intimidating. Like, hey, I'm, I'm just the, the customer trying to have a voice and you guys are all ganging up on me because you all know the technology. It wasn't like that at all. It was really like Shamim and me. And I didn't realize that you said, I'm like, that was how it was. She was exactly that. I'd say this and they'd kind of have it or maybe go, oh, well, we didn't or whatever. And she'd go, no, 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 the, this is what he wants. And she'd restate it as the owner and they'd go, okay. So when I said it, it was kind of like, well, I'm not sure he's a customer. We'll try. And then when Shamim reinforced it, it was like, all right, well, she's the one writing the paycheck. I guess is what we do it. So it did feel very nice. And again, not unfair. Like if, I think uh, on the website, there's a couple things that were, that we wanted and I wasn't clear on what it was. And it, it, you guys took care of us. I, either you didn't charge us or the, the amount you charge is very fair. Cause that's always another thing you get uh, worried about, right? I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to forget one little thing in the scope and then it's important. And I'm going to, I need that. Like, well, it's 800 bucks. Like, Come on, man. I know if I would have gotten that at the bid, it would have been either free or cost an extra hundred bucks. And now you're trying to you know, I was in contracting. It's very common practice to get the contract for nothing and then you make a bunch of money on add-ons. And again, you can do that's fine if you want one job, but if you want multiple jobs or referrals, that ain't going to work. So anyway, all that to say, I really want to encourage what I'm picking up. If you want to start a complex or even a not so complex website project, especially overseas, 
A, make sure the payment's clear and fair to everybody, right? It wouldn't be fair if I said, do all the work and then I'll pay you. Certainly wouldn't be fair if she said, give me all the money, I'll do all the work. So make sure it's kind of broken up. Two, uh, she uses Basecamp, which for me has been phenomenal, but find some sort of, and again, I wouldn't have known to even do that. She, I wouldn't have even known to ask that question. But the first thing she said is, yep, we're going to be on Basecamp and we have all of our little, every, all the pictures and all the things and we can go back and forth and Shamim can kind of see it all, but does it, it's, a, it's an excellent, and again, I'm sure there's a hundred programs. It doesn't have to be Basecamp, but some sort of software technology where I can communicate and then go to bed. Yeah, a project management tool. And this one was, here's what I like. There's project management tools that are super complex and a pain in the neck. And maybe you get it because it's your tool, but I'm new here and I don't understand what the hell's going on. Basecamp, and again, I'm not here for Basecamp. I'm sure there's other good ones. It was simple. I, no one had to train me or do anything. It's just like, here's where we talk and here's where to upload pictures. And if ever there was a, well, you said, and I would we'll just scroll back up. Oh, here's what happened. So first payment, second, have some sort of, communication tool where you can up, you know, a database that's because you get emails that go back and forth and there's like 17 iterations and it's mind numbing, right? So in the more complex the project, the more this just makes you want to blow your head off. Um, so the second would be that tool. And then the third was some sort of system of communication. I didn't demand, Hey, I want to talk to you guys. Every, I wouldn't have even known is it, should we talk every week, every day, every month? Never. I, I have no clue. The fact that she was kind of on top of that made a huge difference. So when you're picking a vendor, the cool thing is I, she gave me a lot of green flags right off the bat. Like even when we started with this, this project, she talked to me a little different. And again, I still needed it done because I'd had bad experiences, but it's, it, yeah. Anyway, those are some of the best practices that I found and just the integrity. Like if I felt like there's a couple times where there was miscommunication was probably my fault, but it wasn't certainly not like no one lied. It was just, we didn't communicate well enough. And I feel like every time she kind of, if there was like, eh, she'd always err to my side. I never felt like there was a, well, we're going to take advantage and whatever. And she could have, and I would have paid, but then I wouldn't have had her on. I wouldn't use her for the thing. <laughs> that would be the end of our relationship. That's, 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 the, that's the best part about it. So you see, uh, integrity and value is built in, right? So I don't have to work hard for it. You don't have to work hard for it. But you know, uh, the, the, the side effect of it and, and, uh, and the value that it, that it gives me, what, how it helps me is that, I remember telling you, I don't have a marketing department. I have a team of 50 means I have hundreds of customers. I don't have a marketing department. Most of my customers are return customers and referrals. Almost all of them are referrals or return customers. Like, you know, you, you're referring people to me. Somebody referred you that that's how I'm working. And that's, I'm, 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 I'm just, I, I'm the only business development person in the company who develops the business. Yeah. And let That's me give it. you guys some context. A, now that I think about it, I was referred to you by uh, an SEO company. I was looking for for SEO. Great people. Didn't, didn't end up using them. Not because of them, because of which just wasn't a fit, but really liked them. The best thing I got out of that relationship, aside from them being great people, was the recommendation to Shamim. Um, I don't think Shamim gives them anything or begs anything, or I don't know what the relationship is, but I didn't get any indication. She's like, paying them. The reason that she's on this podcast now is I promise you, it's not like, Hey, she mean, give me a bunch of money. Or I think there's gonna be a bunch of money. It is because I'm constantly getting bored. And she mean, didn't bring this up. You know, it's a smart. If, if she was going through clean profit methods, she would come to me and go, Hey, I did a great job. I know you've got a big microphone and audience. Why don't you introduce me? I, she should have bad Shamim, but she didn't need to. Cause I'm like, I, you guys come to me and go, I need a good web guy or gal. And it's just, there's those good resources are few and far between. Um, and there's, I just haven't had a lot where I can put out and go, this guy or gal performed fantastically. And I tell you guys, if there was a problem or Shamim had, I don't want to say screwed me, just done anything that I was unhappy with. I tell you, like I told you, is it frustrating, uh, that she, it's seven o'clock in the evening there and seven o'clock in the morning here? Yeah. Is that 80% overcome by the fact she's working when I'm sleeping and vice versa? Yeah, that's nice. And again, am I willing to put up with that pain in the neck because their work is just better and they're honest and it's the, the pricing is very fair and she knows what the heck she's doing? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that all day long. So all that to say, just so you guys know, Shamim didn't come to me and say, hey, can I have a referral? I was so in love with her service and, and you guys are so much in pain. It's, it, of, of course, I'm going to put together the math of you guys going, who can I use? What am I going to say? Well, I use Shamim, but I'm going to you know, hoard that resource to myself. Of course, I'm going to share with you guys. So I just want you to get that. That is how that works. And certainly we want to have a little bit more robust marketing department than just referrals, but it can work like this, right? Like she's gone from zero to 50 employees with no, no money on marketing, no money on whatever. Please don't hear me saying that you should do that. We absolutely need marketing systems, but one of those marketing systems should be an intentional, we have an advocate for the customer, right? She had two or three things. She said, this is how I make sure my customers are happy and not just happy, but surprisingly happy, right? Like I would have been surprised that if it went as smooth as it did, I was shocked that it went as well as it did just because again, and no offense to middle Eastern or, or people not in the States, I've just done it enough and it sucks. So it's almost like I know exactly as many good 
IT Middle East vendors as I know female Pakistani business owners, and they're both you because they're just that's it's so rare. So, um, long story short, let me uh, let me give you one last thing. I'm going to give Shamim a couple uh, minutes to to sum up with any thoughts, and we're going to end it because it's been a, it's been a long episode. So the the one thing I want to leave you with is. Please, please, please don't let the technology stop you. A lot of people, just like Shamim said at the beginning, she was doing everything. She was doing the coding, the bathroom cleaning, the window washing, the locking up, the opening up, the, in the whatever there was to do. Like you guys, she was doing it, right? Sounds like the big turn she made was she started realizing, and it, just so you guys know, it takes steps. The first thing is, well, wait a second. There's one of me, and I know that these people are only going to do it 80% as, as well as I can, but if I only have 24 hours, even if... If I need 30 hours, I got to hire someone else. And if, if they're only half as good or 80% as good, so be it. If there's 10 of them, they can still do more than what I can do. And then when you start really kicking it up, you realize, well, wait a second. I can hire people smarter than me that will actually do a better job. I'm not that good. And that's, that's step two. Everyone wants to get there at the beginning, but it doesn't. You have, you, t- typically, when you start, you hire someone that can't do it as well as you, and you have to, um, to kind of learn. So all that to say... I really want to encourage you that the leverage I want to give you with Shamim is so many of you go, I don't have a website. I can't afford it. I'm afraid someone's going to take advantage of me. I've been taken advantage of. I'm going to get taken advantage of again. Um, certainly, I can't guarantee the future, but I can tell you I've gone through a lot of vendors. Um, I've gotten nothing but green flags of integrity, and that's really it. I mean, I th- I'm sure they're technologically sound, but I'm not smart enough to tell you. I can just tell you, here was what I wanted in my mind. I gave them the money that they told me it would cost. The thing that exists in reality now is better than the thing I had in my mind, and she never screwed me anywhere down the line and that's un- that's i hate to say it, that's unusual for an american vendor and i've it's unique for a uh, middle eastern vendor i've just not found it so all that to say please 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 if you just listen to this and go that was good i you know shamim was interesting that's a great story and do nothing i don't know how much value we've given you if you go here's a project i was going to do and i haven't done it because i'm afraid of the technology and i don't know where to go blah 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 it's not going to help you. If you take action, we're going to help you. So here's what I worked out with Shamim. Um, and I, I want to share it with you guys. And again, I, I don't, I don't want any money. This is just, I really want you guys to succeed. Um, it's hard to go from, some of you might still be going, well, gosh, your website was a couple thousand bucks. I'm not ready for that. That's fine. Maybe you don't need a couple thousand dollar website. Here's what you do need. And here's how Shamim was kind enough to kind of do. And this is what I coach you guys to do, by the way, is do a very inexpensive break even deal, right? Right. For residential. Oftentimes I'll say, do a Facebook ad for three hours of cleaning for 47 bucks. And you're like, well, that it cost me 47 bucks, cost me 50 bucks. I get that. But if a third of those people turn into customers, now you've gotten a customer and all you had to do is break even work for three customers, right? And especially with recurring work. So we set something up like that with Shamim where she said she would do this little easy to get started thing where like there's the money's just not, how do you miss? Um, and then if you love her, you'll continue. If you don't, she, at least she'll break even. And yeah, anyway, so what that looks like is I'm always telling people to start with a funnel. <clears throat> You don't have to start with an entire website. And again, if you want that, God bless you. She did a great job. But if you're like, I don't, you know, I, know, I like you, Mike, but I don't know, but not that much. I'm not spending that kind of money. Fine. Start with a funnel. What that looks like typically is a landing page. Uh, and this is all in the clean profit method. So all you clean profit method members have all the, the, the stuff that you need to do this plus the technology. But guess what? Even if you could do the technology, that's like cleaning the toilets. Don't do that. Pay someone that's an expert to do it as opposed to trying to figure it out. So if you're a clean profit method member, you could literally do this on your own in 27 hours. <clears throat> Or you could pay one of Shamim's person to do it in, I don't know, 31 minutes or however long, substantially less with less headache. So a typical funnel is a landing page with some sort of lead magnet, a thank you page after they've opted in, and then the technology behind it to take that data, right? Hey, I want this. I want seven ways to you know hire a new cleaning company without getting screwed or whatever that case may be. So you'll have to provide the, uh, the, the lead magnet, right? And you'll have to kind of provide the copy of what your lead magnet is and why they should have it. But a landing page, so say if you're in commercial cleaning, you're like, I want to do a landing page for car dealers. You might say seven ways your car dealership's leaking money, right? And give me your email address and I'll send you these seven ways. Um, and then you have a thank you page where you go, hey, your thing's on the way. Maybe a little video saying, you know, you know, give us a call for a bid or some sort of next step. And then uh, the automated system where they get that email or a series of emails, she'll set that whole any funnel of that ilk for 97 bucks. And what she told me is like, this is about what it costs. So <laughs> I get nothing from that. She's not going to get rich off of that. The idea is you work with her and go, wow, crap, Mike wasn't kidding. She's really a rock star. And then when you need something more complex, you don't have to go from zero to this multi-thousand dollar website. Or even if you're like, I'm still not ready for a multi-thousand dollar website, she can do a regular price funnel, which might only cost a couple hundred bucks. I don't know. You have to talk to her. Um, but now you've got this thing where for a couple hundred bucks, you can have funnel after funnel after funnel after funnel. 
that's the power. Okay, so if and when you need technical stuff, at least call her, have a discussion. If you want a big, fat, hairy website that's thousands of dollars to start, God bless. If you're not ready for that, take a smaller step, just like she talked about with the, I wasn't ready to put 10 people on this new technology, but I was ready to go to San Francisco myself and handle it. So you might be not be ready to do a whole website overhaul, but I promise you there's a funnel that you could add today for a hundred bucks that would be a no brainer. So um, that's, that's my thought. That's my call to action is you don't have to go from zero to brand new website or some sort of app or some crazy thing which she could do, but don't start there, right? Even me, I didn't use the app. I did the website, which was a little bit and we did it and move forward. Start with a funnel and learn what that process is and just have this technology in your back pocket of when I need a funnel, I can go to bed at night saying, Shamim, please make this and wake up and it's probably going to be done. All right. That's my closing thought. Shamim, I'm going to give you the last word. Tell Cleaning Nation what's what. Give them a little parting value. Thank you so much. Uh, you you uh, probably covered everything, but there's just one thing that I wanted to uh, uh, basically uh, focus on. Is like you said, when you came to me, uh, you you came with this bidding tool idea. You didn't know what technology it was going to go with. I so I I need you to put that trust into me. The reason that we did this whole uh, podcast and we spoke about trust and integrity is because uh, with the with the kind of experience, 20 years experience in the tech, tech industry, I know exactly what tool you need i'm not going to so if if, if, if a tool um, if you come back to me and tell me uh, you know shamim i need to make this website on um um uh, on wix for example uh, i would uh, and I, I and i know that you don't have the kind of money to keep paying wix every month because it's it's a monthly thing i will tell you that i just won't say okay all right fine you know just go ahead this is how much i'll charge i'll tell you why don't you do this? Why don't you uh, build this website? And I'll introduce you to something like WordPress. Why don't you build it on WordPress? Because it's a one-time payment. We just have to pay one time and then not just one-time payment. This is your code to take anywhere you want. Did you know that if you leave Wix, you leave your website with them? You didn't, right? But with WordPress, it's your code. So I, 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 like, to, I like to make that sort of a relationship with my customer where they, they should be able to trust me. And it's not that I'm always going to be right. I mean, there's, there's, there is this... You know, uh, bottleneck, they'll, they'll come where I don't have more knowledge than what, you know, that I have. Maybe then I'll, I'll go and learn some more. But I, I'm sure that I do know uh, my, uh, uh, you know, industry uh, much better than uh, a customer who's not from the industry, especially, you know, from the cleaning company. If you come to me and if you ask me something, I will give you suggestions that will save your money for you. And which is why, you know, when I spoke with you, I said, let's do this funnel, uh, you know, click funnel for these guys, the funnel, uh, the funnel page, the lead magnet page for these guys to show them how it's done. You can, you can use WordPress for it. You can use click funnel for it. You can use uh, whichever tool you want uh, that you already member of it or you've already bought. And we can just pick that up and build a lead magnet on it and a thank you page. It doesn't matter. No matter what, uh, you know, uh, what email marketing t tool you want to use, if you're using some pay tool, I'd rather take you to a, to a tool that's free. I tell you, go use MailChimp. It's 2,000 emails free. Go use that, you know, till, till you get, till you break even and you, you, you know, you, you have more, more money to spend on marketing. Why don't you just go and use that? So those are things that I know that I would want, I would love to share with you. So talk to me. I, I don't want you to be scared uh, of, uh, you know, a, 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 a woman in South Asia, um, you know, you, you're not sure, which is why, um, you know, I, I, I came on this podcast, which is why I wanted to talk to you, which is why I actually came to the U.S. I keep, you know, coming to the U.S. once or twice a year to meet my customers. A lot of my customers know me not, personally. Not me, by the way. She came to Arizona and wouldn't even let me take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm coming back. I'm going to be back. Uh, yeah, years. she'll tell me two months after. Oh, I was in Phoenix. I was next door to you. I just didn't come over. <laughs> Uh, okay, all right. <laughs> Push me to the wall on that. I'll just give you our okay. time. All right, let me let me sum up because we're just about out of here. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And that was a list of just perfect examples on the questions that we don't even know to ask. So that's a perfect example. I know that you guys love Wix and I hate it and I don't know why. And I was listening to Shamima going, that's why I hate Wix. Those are exactly why I don't like it. And sorry, Wix, if you're listening, I don't have anything personally against you. It's just not a tool I like. So perfect example of not even knowing the questions to ask, right? Like if we come on Wix and say, build this, we don't even know to go, well, is this right? And what happens if I leave? And th those are kind of the things that we don't know that we don't know. I don't know what happens when I leave Wix. I've never left it. And then when I leave it, I get this bad, you know, bad thing happens where she can tell you this is what's going to happen. And then if you still want to use Wix, God bless, but at least you know 
you know what you didn't know before. So I just want to encourage you. That has been my experience with Shamim. Um, I feel like I'm pretty experienced as a digital marketer, know a lot uh, more technology than most. And she's still teaching me new stuff. And she's always nice about it. So I don't feel stupid, but uh, I wouldn't. I'd be a big jerk. All right. Anyway, that's been Shamim. She's been awesome. Um, Shamim.Rajini at Genetech, G E N E. T-E-C-H solutions.com. I think I nailed it. If you were like me, you're like, that's too many vowels and consonants in a row. Go to growmycleaningcompany.com. Look up this podcast. We'll put a link to her email address. And by the way, very few times do I get an owner of a 50 person uh, deal. Come on to the show and go, here's my personal email address. If any of your customers need anything, just have them reach out. And I'll tell you, Shamim has been, again, our, I don't know what her revenue is, but our first project was like two, two grand, maybe, I don't know, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. And she actually personally talked to me again. She didn't do the work, which is good. She shouldn't be, but I, I she, anytime I emailed her, she emailed me back. So she's been super responsive. Uh, hopefully cleaning nation, you guys won't blow her out with too many emails, but go to growmycleaningcompany.com for her contact information. Uh, Take advantage of the the ninety seven dollar deal. At least get what that funnel is. Again, she's not making any money after it. I don't get you know I don't get paid off of this. I just want you guys to have a good experience uh, and give me the feedback. Right, let me know that she's doing a great job. And as long as we keep getting that positive feedback, we're going to keep bringing her to Cleaning Nation. As much as I love you, Shamim, as soon as I start getting negative feedback, obviously that's going to end. <laughs> but um, right now, personally, I'm, I'm working with her, which is great because a lot of times I haven't used the person I'm recommending because I don't own a cleaning company, so I can't say like swept. We love them, but I don't use them. I don't I don't have cleaner. So it wouldn't make sense. Shamim, I've used, I'm currently using, I'm going to use in the future. So give us the feedback, growmycleaningcompany.com. See you there. Congratulations. You are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.